I'll be delivering uh, and discussing about the new generation basal insulin that is Deglutec. So how we can overcome the burden of hypoglycemia? We know that we are talking about a disease where we have seen the benefit of having a good and intensive glycemic control from the very onset. But the the limiting factor is hypoglycemia. Like insulin is having an enormous potential of decreasing any hypoglycemia to euglycemia, but the deterrent is is hypoglycemia. So we'll be seeing that how we can help this problem with this new generation, this second generation basal insulin. So this is the agenda, the emergence of next generation basal insulin, the next generation basal insulin, the safety. So we'll be discussing uh, the emergence of next generation basal insulin. So our journey of insulin has been there for last for last uh, 100 years. So first we have been able to to, to, to got an insulin to be developed and then came the the we, we have got insulin from from animal sources which were close to human insulin but they were not exactly human insulin so then came the recombinant insulin and for that we will be we, we, we were in search for a basal insulin and bolus insulin for basal insulin that should be a a peakless insulin which should act for more than 24 hours. We were not having such kind of option. What we were having was NPH insulin, uh, which was first to be developed as an intermediate acting insulin. Then came the Detemir and Glargin U100, but they were still short of of being uh, being uh, acting for for 24 hours. And some of them, especially in those patients who were requiring larger dosages. They were short of this 24 hours and they were actually not truly peakless. Uh, then came the Glargin U300 like or, or 2G and then this Deglodec or, or Tresipa. So this has been an achievement because now we are having an option when we talk about the basal insulin option, uh, which is only once a day insulin, which is lasting for more than 24 hours and which is having a very low variability. This, these options were having a medium uh, variability while this was having a high uh, variability. It was having a peak after six to eight hours and that is why it was not a, a very good option even when the patient was taking in the form of premixes or bit, bit below or, or before dinner, he was having a peak at three of three to five a.m. and that was the reason of having more chance of having nocturnal hypoglycemia. So then came this, this, this newer generation Degludec insulin, which is having a unique mode of, of, uh, of action. So it fights longer duration of action and a better predictability when it is injected in the form of a dihexamer, uh, it, it forms a dihexamer formation. And when phenol dissolves, it ultimately res for, results in formation of multi-hexamer chain formation. And then slowly zinc diffuses and this diffusion leads to release of, of dimers when, which then ultimately becomes monomers and, and they get absorbed in the, into the capillaries and then they act. So this is the mechanism of action of this, this uh, second generation insulin. So Glargin 300, which is another second generation uh, or, or, or new generation basal insulin is also having um, a duration of action of more than 24 hours, but, but it reaches to its uh, its action late as compared to this deglutec. So it is having a comparatively delayed action, and particularly which which is not suiting to 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 the need of inpatients or or those patients. Uh, Glargin hundred or or Lantus and other uh, analog which we are having, they have an onset of action at two to four hours. They have minimal peak. And, but they are short of 24 hours in some of those patients. So Degludec has a faster onset of action and prolonged duration of action as compared to Glargin U3, U100 as well as Glargin U300. So not only this PD is different, it is having lesser risk of hypoglycemia with equivalent glycemic control. So when we talk about this new switch to study, uh, versus Glargin U100, you can see that there is a 30% lower risk 
of of hypoglycemia with degludeg as compared to 100 and it was significant uh, and this we are talking about the overall symptomatic hypoglycemia as well as when we talk about nocturnal symptomatic hypoglycemia so when the patient is not able to check uh, and the patient initially would be very very anxious that uh, some of them would be arguing that if they would be going to sleep after taking an injection what will be the chances of having, having hypoglycemia which can have treated consequences so you can see that there is a very uh, good profile with with with, with this degludeg when the chances of having nocturnal symptomatic hypoglycemia is significantly less and the the risk is actually 42% lower with degludeg uh when we talk about this devote study versus glargine u100 it has also shown that the relative risk was 0.6 it means that there was 40% risk reduction uh, of severe hypoglycemia with degludeg as compared to u100 and the risk of nocturnal severe hypoglycemia was also reduced significantly by a figure of 53% and there was non-inferior THBNC over time with degludex. So we can achieve our target blood glucose levels with lesser risk of overall hypoglycemia as well as lesser risk of nocturnal symptomatic hypoglycemia. So, so when it's another study that which is EU treat real world evidence. Now we not talk about only those studies which are done in in strict and stringent conditions but we also talk about the real world evidences with all the constraints of of uh, uh, following those patients with compliance and all such issues if the drug is still showing good result it means that it is a practical attestation that the drug is doing good so when we compare this degludeg in type 1 diabetic and type 2 diabetic population uh, in six month and and twelve month, so it shows that it favors degludeg as compared to previous treatments, and it was significant in this forest graph in all the parameters, whether it is overall hypoglycemic episode, non-severe overall hypoglycemic episode, non-severe nocturnal hypoglycemic episode, as well as severe hypoglycemic episode, which were drastically reduced. Uh, whether we talk about the, the the initial six months period or even one year period as compared to previous treatment. And same was the case with type 2 diabetes. Uh, when we talk about the achievement of target safely, we see this graph so uh, which shows that this parabolic uh, graph is suggesting that when we target uh, very low HbA1c in our patients, we tend to have more risk of hypoglycemia, especially with the previous generation incident like glargine U100 in this graph. And the risk of hypoglycemia again increases when the HbA1c is very high. So then there would be more fluctuation. And this can even be improved with the help of degludeg. Even when we when we try to have an a more intensive glycemic control, the risk of hypoglycemia is less. And this graph is more, more smooth with the help of this degludeg as compared to glargine U100. So A1C reduction and incidence of hypoglycemia. So if we can have the similar achievement of HbA1C with lesser risk of hypoglycemia. So patients could achieve a mean HbA1C reduction of 0.7% of HbA1C reduction more with degludeg as compared to glargine U100 with with the equivalent risk of hypoglycemia so with similar risk of hypoglycemia if, if we want to put our patient in we would be having 0.7 percent more reduction of a bnc in our patients with degludeg as compared to glargine u100 so what is the clinical interpretation of hypoglycemia evidence uh, in degludeg versus glargine 100 so when we talk about the numbers needed to treat so how much is is the option uh, how much the option is cost effective so this switch to and switch one effect uh, study has shown that if we are treating one patient for one year uh, for uh, type 2 diabetes we will be will be decreasing uh, one event of oral hypoglycemia 
and in type 1 diabetes one patient for four months if if it is treated we can decrease one such event when we talk about nocturnal hypoglycemia three patients for one year and one patient for one year in in, in type 2 and type 1 diabetes respectively would reduce one event and uh, in when we talk about severe hypoglycemia which is a very treated complicate uh, complication for uh, a lot of our patient and some of them would be very uh, less uh, uh, interested in, in taking insulin again after having hypoglycemia especially in in type 2 diabetic patient who are not driven enough so and we can reduce this when we are treating three patients for one year in size switch one uh, in for for type 1 diabetes and for type 2 diabetes if you are treating 21 patients for one year so this leaps of innovation like nph insulin was having a, a half life of just 5 to 10 hours while insulin gluten was having a half life of 12.5 hours and this has resulted in 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 reduction of hypoglycemia uh, so non severe hypoglycemia re reduced by 11% nocturnal hypoglycemia reduced by 26% and severe hypoglycemia reduced by 46% and with the half life of 25 more than 25 hours in case of degludec it has resulted in the similar kind of of uh, of improvement like non severe hypoglycemia is reduced by 17% nocturnal hypoglycemia reduced by 36% and severe hypoglycemia reduced by 86% so this level of innovation in insulin uh, degludec as compared to glargin u100 has resulted in almost as 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 much improvement as we have uh, got from NPH uh, to, to glargine conversion. So conclude study was done in those patients who were already taking insulin. Uh, so in those, you can see that uh, degludec versus glargine 300 were compared though uh, this comparison was done with degludec u200 which is not available in our country and ultimately the primary endpoints were not able to be achieved were not achieved uh, because of the faulty glucometer un uh, unfortunately but you can see uh, if if we talk about the numerical values the in the maintenance period the overall symptomatic hypoglycemia were numerically favored favoring this degludec while nocturnal symptomatic and severe hypoglycemia were significantly better in, in degludec arm as compared to glargine 300 while in the total treatment period and main, uh, total treatment period also all these parameters were better so not only the rate of hypoglycemia but also the proportion of participants with hypoglycemia so this is the total number of events and this then the people who were having uh, the, these events uh, so the, both these uh, parameters were better with with degludec as compared to glargine 300 but unfortunately their primary endpoint were not met because of those faulty glucometers so and lower hypoglycemia with better glycemic control versus glargine 300 in the confirmed study it was a uh, real world evidence and has shown that change in rate of hypoglycemia was reduced by 30 percent it was significant and change in proportion with hypoglycemia was reduced by 36 percent it was also significant with degludec as compared to glargine 300 that is 2 g so what is the additional benefit of embracing these insulin so uh, degludec uh, because it binds to fatty acid in the blood in the in the blood uh, and it has a different mechanism of action as compared to glargine 300 and u100 uh, so, so especially glargine u300 so you can see uh, that the insulin required when we talk about the number of units uh, per kg body weight is also less with degludec as compared to glargine u300 as and and glargine u100 and same has been confirmed with 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 uh, with, with some of uh, the studies and also the 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 within the variability with degludec is less so we talk about the the glycemic variability which itself is an independent cardiovascular risk factor and uh, it is less when we see these uh, quartiles across the day you can see that it is not as variable as uh, the glargine u100 
uh, Hundert's effect is so the variability increases across the uh, changes across the day while it is almost similar across the day with the glue day. And lower within the variability with the glue day is also has has also been seen as compared to glargine U300, not only U100. So with the same amount of insulin being given, you can see that there is a lot more uniformity with deglutag as compared to glargine U300. So this is another slide which is showing that when we give insulin at different point of time, what will be the chances of having fluctuation? So whether uh, this uh, deglutag is being given at any point of time, it is not having much difference. While the glargine U100 as well as 300, it is having lesser day-to-day uh, -day variability when it is being given in the morning or evening time, while it is having a much uh, variable profile when it is given in the daytime. So there has been lower glycemic variability with deglutag versus glargine 100 and significantly better time in range and lower time below range. So this has been, uh, there has been some recent studies like switch pro RCT, which uh, this randomized control trial has compared different studies and it has shown that the nocturnal level two and level one hyper, hypoglycemia, which corresponds to 70 to 55, uh, this this 20 to 55 and this less than 55 milligram per deciliter of 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 blood glucose level. So both the levels were less with the glutag as compared to glargine U100, uh, and the nocturnal level come one plus two combined. They were also less. They were 12 percent less as compared to the comparator. And the estimated treatment difference is a significant 1.5. 3% or 20 minutes per day. So the person will be having more time in the euglycemic range, the time in range without having uh, more risk of time below range as well as lesser time in time above range. So this hypodic trial in, in type 1 diabetes has also shown that there was significantly lower uh, coefficient of variation with the gludec and the diurnal variation was comparable. While when we talk about the nocturnal risk, nocturnal hypoglycemia, there was significantly lower coefficient of variation, the less variable uh, blood glucose profile with Jekyllodeck as compared to glargine U100 in type 1 diabetic population. So different parameters like coefficient of variation, the, the mean amplitude of glycemic excursion, the mean of daily difference, they all were better with Degludeg as compared to other options when the persons were shifted to Degludeg. So you can see they have improved uh, in, in, in those indices uh, when we talk about the glycemic variability. So there has been lower glycemic variability with Degludeg versus Glargine 300 also. So you can see that time in range uh, is comparable. Uh, uh, it is, is, is actually uh, significantly better with glargine U300. HbA1c was uh, was was uh, also was comparable. The time in range, uh, time above range, was uh, was more with you while the this this adverse uh, index was less in deglodeg U100 and it was numerically better and this all these all benefits we can have with lower dose with, with better fasting plasma glucose reduction with the gludec with similar dose and it has been seen in the bright study also so you can see that the the better fasting plasma glucose reduction was there with with similar dosage though they have started differently as per the the uh, the recommendation, the deglodec was started with 10 unit per uh, 10 unit per day, and then it was subsequently updated. While glargine uh, 300 was initiated with 0.2 unit per kg body weight, which has resulted in actually higher dosage, but still uh, the results 
where good with deglutec you hundred with similar kind of of fasting plasma glu- plasma glucose uh, achievement with lesser units of insulin required so fasting plasma glucose reduction versus baseline was bit with deglutec as compared to 300 in that price study with similar insulin usage or when we talk about the similar kind of of blood glucose reduction the doses required was less so deglutec offer offers unparalleled flexibility versus glargine u100 as well as glargine 300 uh and when when we talk about the the, the theoretical possibility the patient can take from 8 hours to 40 hours after taking the first injection so even if the patient skips in the morning he can take in the in the evening or in, or at the lunch time while we have almost no flexibility we usually advise that the patient should not take uh, 30 minutes before or after when we talk about the glargine u100 while with glargine 300 3 hours plus minus is usually the prescribed timing when we talk about the the interday variability about injection uh, about insulin injection at different days so there has been observation that the the, the adherence with deglutec is is better and it has been confirmed with confirmed study the likelihood of discontinuation of basal insulin treatment in patients who initiated treatment with deglutec or glargine 300 you can see that the the proportion of patients discontinuing were higher with glargine u300 as compared to deglutec after a similar uh observation period and as i have ex- uh, I, i was explaining there was requirement of lower dosage uh, there was 12 10% lower dose with deglutec as compared to glargine u100 and almost 23% lower dose with deglutec versus glargine u300 which we have seen in our clinical practice also a lesser monitoring which would might be required because of the lesser risk of nocturnal hypoglycemia as well as overall lesser risk of hypoglycemia so that two steps less per week with deglutec versus glargine u100 in that study shows that it is it might be even more cost effective also so just to conclude my talk this second generation basal insulin which is having a A, a lesser peak and lesser risk of hypoglycemia especially the nocturnal hypoglycemia and as well as overall hypoglycemia uh, has faster onset of action and a prolonged duration of action is truly best truly long acting or basal insulin uh, as compared to to its preceders uh, it has lower within day and day to day variability as demonstrated by pkpd pd studies it has proven hypoglycemia benefit as compared to glargine in in randomized controlled trials as well as in the real world evidences it offers an unparalleled 8 to 40 hour flexibility in day to day tra- administration the patient uh, should be counseled that they, they 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 don't have to bother about the the timing with meal or or with even with uh, with the timing across the day they can take it uh, according to their uh, schedule or or even if they skip they can compensate they, they, they can take it after some point of time uh, like if if they are taking in the morning they they can again take it uh, at 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 lunch or 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 at the time of dinner so they have more flexibility and it it provides a a, a better sense of of well being as well as increased chances of adherence then we are advising basal insulin to our patients so with this i would stop here and would encourage you to ask any of of your queries if you have